Sam. Well, now let's talk about who actually won the month of August in recruiting. Speaking of August winners, Inside Scoop fans, listen up. I need to tell you about these bird dog shorts that I've been wearing. Bird dogs were the big August winner for me because I live in Nashville, Tennessee. It's hot here. And I wear my bird dogs for a couple months. I love them. I wear them when I go to work. I've been wearing them golfing. So, of course, when I went on vacation to Florida, I wore them. And let me tell you, it gets swampy down in Florida. It gets swampy down there, if you know what I mean. But Bird Dogs has a great cloud knit fabric that looks just like a nice pair of khakis, but way more flexible. And most importantly, it keeps you cool and dry, even when you're on vacation down in that Florida swamp. So here's what we're going to do. Go to birddogs.com forward slash Josh or enter promo code Josh for a Bird Dogs tech hat with your order. Look at this. I got one right here. I wear it golfing. I wear it to the beach. It feels great. It's very light. It's a bird dog. What can I say? So go to birddogs.com forward slash Josh or promo code Josh for a free bird dogs hat. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. Back to August winners. Let's start with my runner up. Ole Miss started the month ranked 29th, 30th. I think they were ranked 30th at one point, but currently after the month that they had, ranked number 21, they landed defensive lineman Cam Franklin, quarterback Trevor Jackson, wide receiver Noriel White, wide receiver San Frisco McGee, and tight end Dylan Hip. They get prospects all across the board. Now, Cam Franklin was definitely the statement win for Ole Miss, landing him over Miami and Auburn, especially late. This looked like it was trending toward Auburn. It looked like it was trending toward Miami. I think he made six visits to Miami just this offseason, but Ole Miss lands him in the end. It was a huge recruitment and also a major statement for Lane Kiffin. But Sam, Ole Miss is looking for playmakers as well on offense, and they got a pair committed to them in August. What do you think about Trevor Jackson and Noriel White and what they can do for the Ole Miss offense? Yeah, well, you know, Lane Kiffin likes to go at a high tempo and sling it around the yard. And Trevor Jackson done it at a, a really incredible clip this entire offseason. It was kind of a big riser in the rankings over the spring and then after the summer. And Lane Kiffin wasting no time trying to fill that void. He's the he's the quarterback hunter and he doesn't waste any time. So I love that. And I think the statement here is Norreal White. Obviously, he's an in-state wide receiver, an in-state four-star wide receiver. And he committed to Arkansas so early in this process, and it made it a, a serious uphill climb. Um, after he committed elsewhere in the SEC, not only Ole Miss, but Mississippi State became a major threat for Norreal White. Um, it kind of came as a surprise when he reopened his process so early, but Ole Miss was was constantly putting in the work behind the scenes. So you talked about a really big August with getting their their big in-state defensive tackle, but they also landed one of their top guys in in the pass catching board, and they all they have a very Mississippi heavy yeah. group of pass catchers. But it's a really you know it's like a basketball crew of receivers that that now Trevor Jackson has at his disposal. So if you're an Ole Miss fan, you got to be really excited about the talent on that roster, especially not only with Cam Franklin on defense, but really on the offensive side of the ball and Lane Kiffin. Yeah, it is getting excited, and I like the fact that the foundation of this class is built from in-state prospects. I think that says a lot for the direction Ole Miss could head into the season. But my question to you is. You know, the finishing 30th is unacceptable at Ole Miss in recruiting. Finishing around the top 20 is probably expected. But what can Lane Kiffin and this Ole Miss team do to get up into that top 15, maybe even knocking on the door of a top 10 class? What do they need to do this season to, to achieve that? Yeah, I mean, listen, like you said, they, they're they building a really nice fence around the state. That's kind of been the, dir the direction of, of not only programs across the country, but for Ole Miss and Lane Kiffin staff in, in particular. Um, you know, they have a chance to kind of they've been dominating in state recruiting. Look at how they finished with with Suntorian Perkins last year, who's going to be an impact player on this defense. And you bring in someone like Pete Golding to basically recruit for the defense. And you have Lane Kiffin and his and his staff on offense. Um, I think they they if they have the season that they, that they expect, which is supposed to be one of the, the better offenses in the SEC and a chance to make waves on defense to be, be more involved in these close games and try to close it with defense down the end. If they do that. They're going to have some some reinforcements recruiting. They're recruiting really well in state. They're going to take that to a national level, maybe a regional level, getting outside the state and dipping into places like Texas, like Louisiana, and also Georgia and Florida, as they have in the past. All right. Now on to the winner of the month of August. The winner of the month of August in recruiting is UCF. Look at this. 
Jalen Hayward, who was committed to Georgia to start the month, ends up com- – fl- oh, well, he decommitted. It wasn't a flip. He decommitted for a week or two, commits to UCF. They also land running back Frankie Arthur, wide receiver Bradell Richardson, wide receiver Day-Day Farmer, and wide receiver Jordan Bridgewater. Jalen Hayward, though, committing to UCF over Miami after decommitting from UGA. I think, you know, not as big of a shock as maybe williams Winery, but – a big shock nonetheless. They get their highest rated commitment ever in Jalen Hayward. He's the number seven ranked safety in the country, 108 overall, but chooses UCF over Miami. He's from Rockledge High School. He's visited the Canes a bunch, but I think I overlooked that late official visit to UCF, and I guess that was enough, but Jalen Hayward's a huge pickup. Speaking of overlooking, I did not see the move that UCF made coming at the running back position. The Knights landed Stacey Gage, one of the best backs in Florida, in June. Then they go out in August into the state of Texas and land Frankie Arthur. He's ranked about 100 spots higher than even Stacey Gage. So how is UCF able to do this to go into Texas and land Arthur? Also, you've seen a lot of them. How good is he? He's a really good back, and I think he could play in any conference in the country. You know, largely he was being recruited by Big 12 schools. Kansas, TCU were all really hard on Frankie Arthur. And when I was when I was by Conroe Oak Ridge this spring, you know, it was it was just starting to pick up. Oregon was among his first offers. Um, and Carlos Lachlan, if you know the running back coach at Oregon, yeah. he doesn't. It's not a, it's not a, 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 cra- a crazy offer to offer him Frankie Arthur. He can do it all. He's a big bodied running back. And, you know, you think about the power and, and downhill running style of Stacey Gage with Frankie Arthur. Again, it's that same tough downhill physical running style, but he's also really dynamic with the ball in his hands in space. And it seems like UCF, like you said, the getting Jalen Hayward speaks volumes and then going to get a running back on the other side of the ball from the state of Texas. They're recruiting at a national level at UCF, which as they make that conference league, these are the kind of resources you need. Yeah. So speaking of that, is this move to the big 12 kind of the boost that UCF needed? Is that why, why we're seeing results on the recruiting trail? Yeah, of, of course. I think that when you can play in a conference that you know is going to be featured on primetime TV week in and week out and play for an offensive minded coach like coach Malzahn and, I mean, listen, UCF has historically, maybe as a as a group of five team, has has had, you know, in, incredible success. But now the chance to do that in a in a bigger, broader conference, I mean, that's going to give them a national spotlight, which I think they've 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 certainly deserved over the past 10 plus years. And now they have a chance to kind of soak up and, and thrive in that in that area. UCF wins the month of august now of course we know everybody don't leave the comments that winning one month means everything we know it doesn't mean anything everything this is just something fun that we do but it's also fun to look back at sam look at this so ucf wins august fsu won july uf won june uga won may we've only been doing this for four months but Maybe, you know, I, we talk a lot about the big three in Florida. It might be the big four in Florida, dare I say. Yeah, when is, when is Miami's turn? I mean, <laughs> come on, Josh. I mean, we, we, we know. We you know, know Miami your... had their chance. This <laughs> could did. have been Miami's month because if they land Cam Franklin, if they land Colin Simmons, if they land D- David Stone or any combination, two of those three, then they probably do win the month of August. But instead, it's UCF winning the month of August. Let me know in the comments section who you thought won the month. All right, Sam, thank you for joining us on this first live show. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Josh. Thank you for watching. Make sure you smash that subscribe button for me. And remember to check out all the videos on the On3 YouTube page.